Coming up, a proven way to reduce Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and more. Reduce cholesterol, heart disease, and protects against cancer. And best of all, it's completely natural. It's as simple as a tea mixture. And then, a toddler falls down a well. Somebody said there was water in it. Head first. In all practical purposes, he was dead. Watch the miracle that wowed the medics. Unexplainable. On today's 700 Club. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the 700 Club. Thank you for sharing part of your day with us. The shooting rampage in California that killed 14 people might have been even worse because the husband and wife jihadis may have had another target in mind, a local high school. That's just one of the findings from investigators as they dig into what the terrorists were planning. And it turns out the wife was able to get into the United States even though she believed in radical Islam. Caitlin Burke has the story. The FBI says the couple who launched the terror attack in San Bernardino, California, was radicalized long before they met online and before ISIS emerged as the global threat it's become. Our investigation to date indicates that they were actually radicalized before they started uh, courting or dating each other online. This oversight raises new fears about potential problems with the government's visa program. Tashfin Malik came to the U.S. in 2014 on a fiancé visa. The government didn't detect anything about her radical views before letting her into the country. But the FBI says they don't believe that ISIS has any terror cells here. So far as we can tell, they have not succeeded in penetrating our borders with their operatives. That's an aspiration of theirs. As the FBI continues trying to unravel the information left behind by the killers, word of an earlier plot has surfaced. Farouk's friend Enrique Marquez, who's accused of purchasing the assault-style rifles used in the San Bernardino attack, claims he and Farouk planned an attack in 2012. Investigators are trying to piece that new information with what they already have, including a picture of a San Bernardino area high school that was found on Farouk's cell phone. Fox News reports that federal authorities are expected to bring charges against Marquez. While investigators look into terrorism at home, some senators have serious questions about how the war against ISIS is going in Iraq and Syria. Defense Secretary Ash Carter testified before the Senate Armed Services Committee Wednesday, saying the U.S. is ready to help push back ISIS in Iraq. The United States is prepared to assist the Iraqi army with additional unique capabilities to help them finish the job, including attack helicopters and accompanying advisors, if circumstances dictate and if requested by Prime Minister Abadi. Senator John McCain pressed Carter for more U.S. troops on the ground to fight ISIS, saying, quote, there are 20 to 30,000 of them. They are not giants. Somebody is going to have to convince me that air power alone is going to do the job. As lawmakers debate what to do about ISIS in the Middle East, many analysts believe that San Bernardino was only the beginning of successful homegrown attacks here in the U.S. Caitlin Burke, CBN News. The main priority of the President of the United States is to keep the American people safe. We hope that some strategies present opportunities for that. Well, President Obama has made it clear he believes Muslims who are fleeing from ISIS and war in the Middle East should be allowed into the United States. But what about Christians? Wendy Griffith has that story from the CBN Newsroom. Here's Wendy. Thank you, Terry. Christian leaders are pushing the Obama administration for protection for Christians from ISIS. Politico reports the leaders want the administration to declare that ISIS is committing genocide against Christians. The term genocide has specific legal and political implications. Under international treaties, the U.S. might have a legal obligation to act if the State Department does declare that Christians are suffering genocide. That would put more pressure on the White House to give protections to Iraqi and Syrian Christians, and many in Congress would support the idea. So what are conditions like for Christians who have fled from ISIS? Our Chris Mitchell brings us this report from Kurdistan at what Christians are enduring in a refugee camp. They drive on dirt roads, exist in cramped caravans, and are strangers in their own land. For many Christians, this has become the way of life. 
This is a refugee camp for Christians on the outskirts of Erbil, the capital of Kurdistan. Several thousand people live in these camps, and almost everyone had to leave more than a year ago when ISIS took over their villages and towns. This woman says they can't go back home. It's impossible to go back to our towns because ISIS took even the tiles from the floors and there's nothing left for us. Even if we went back, we cannot rebuild our homes again. That would take a long time and a lot of money. Many talk about the hard life inside the camp. It's really very bad because we don't have jobs and we have nothing to look forward to. Medical care is limited. For example, this woman's son suffers from a heart condition and receives no treatment. This woman says Iraqi Christians have had a long and troubled history. Almost every day of my life, we've been living with the economic crisis, political crisis, explosions, the war with Kuwait, the war with Iran, the war with ISIS. We have spent our lives surrounded by problems, wars, and battle. Those with enough money have already left. The ones who remain have nowhere to go. We feel we have no end here. We are still inside our country, but still we feeling we have no aim for life. Because we are people of life. We are not that people to stay in caravan for all our life. Those people, they are alive people. We are not dead people. Most want to escape to a Western country, but that's becoming a distant dream. Critics charge the percentage of Middle East Christians allowed into the U.S. has been disproportionately low compared to Muslims. Retired General Jay Garner says the White House has left these victims out of the discussion. I don't think there's been any discussion. I don't, I don't know of one utterance coming from our government about the persecution of Christians in the Middle East. The only thing I've heard, quasi-religious statement I've heard, is I've heard the president say several times that ISIS is not Islam. I don't know what he thinks the I stands for, but there's been no dialogue at all about the terrible, terrible, terrible persecution of Christians in the Middle East, and I think that's tragic. Many hope Christians around the world will pray for them. And I like uh, from the people to pray for us in the name of God, Savior, in their hearts to solve our problem. Unless those prayers are answered, thousands will remain in these refugee camps. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Akawa Refugee Camp, Kurdistan. Thanks, Chris. Our prayers go out to them. Well, here at home, some black pastors say the Black Lives Matter movement isn't going to solve the problems of the inner cities. And they say the government won't either. A number of urban pastors that gathered in Washington Wednesday say the Black Lives Matter movement concentrates on police violence against blacks and does nothing to solve the plagues of poverty, fatherlessness, crime, and immorality that ravage inner cities. They're pushing Project Awakening, a plan to unite churches, businesses, and private institutions to renew cultural values and rescue urban lives and communities. Project Awakening is gonna address this. It's directed to address this issue of removing the lie of the community pitted against law enforcement. It's not we against them. Right. Government has not helped the situation. It's only made the situation worse. So we're looking to partner with corporations and private foundations and, and bring in mentors and begin to get the entrepreneurial juices of people flowing. Uh, I've said many, many times, it should not be that the drug dealer is the primary entrepreneur in the black community. Mm. The pastors say concentrating on racism won't solve the crisis of urban America. They argue instilling traditional values and a renewed respect for capitalism and work in young people will do much more to pull them up out of hopelessness and poverty. And Terry, that certainly makes a lot of sense to me. It makes a great deal of sense. And, you know, all of us can participate in all of this with prayer for revival. And uh, if you are someone who's in leadership in a corporation, stand up and become a part of the solution. Thanks, Wendy. Well, coming up, it can lower your risk for heart disease, replace allergy meds, and taste great with crumpets. Sound like your cup of tea? We have a tea for arthritis. There are many teas that have antibiotic properties. These are all teas from natural plants. Hear about some of the surprising benefits hidden in your tea when we return. Still ahead, 
have your cheesecake and eat it too. The duo behind America's fastest growing lifestyle craze share how you can have a trim, healthy holiday later on today's 700 Club. Well, hello, folks. I have in my hand the elixir of life, <laughs> one of the great beverages of all time. Well, you are a tea drinker. I am absolutely a tea drinker. I got mm -hmm. kicked off a of coffee because I had headaches. But anyhow, <laughs> we're going to tell you about what this will do for you. Yeah. It's one of the most commonly and widely studied drinks in America. It's called tea, T-E-A-T. -E and the verdict is in. The tea is very good for you. Our health reporter, Laurie Johnson, tells us why. When it comes to our health, tea packs a powerful punch. Combined studies examining thousands of tea drinkers have led scientists to conclude a consistent dose of tea is good for the body. Most of the research was done in Asian countries on people drinking hot green tea. The amount mattered. Usually, people only saw health benefits after drinking at least three cups a day. That's the dose Manhattan cardiologist Patrick Fratellone recommends to his patients. Benefits include lower risk of diabetes, liver disease, and more. The active component in green tea is EGCG, and that's a polyphenol that helps reduce cholesterol, heart disease, and protects against cancer. It comes from the Camellia sinensis plant, as do black and white teas. I like organic tea because they're grown in, you want to make sure it's grown in an area that's free of metal in the soil, so you don't want to have lead, cadmium, mercury, any bad toxic elements. If it's in a bag, you don't want a bag that has a staple on it. Sometimes that could get in the tea, but I'd rather have loose. Sometimes I don't even strain it. I leave it in there and tell them to eat the leaves. Research shows green tea also helps the brain by improving memory, reducing the risk of Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and depression, as well as significantly lowering your chance of having a stroke. Leave it longer in the hot water and it gets even better for you. Tea is met, meant to be drunk plain. Um, and you get the more medicinal benefits when you add milk or sugar. You can deactivate some of the active medicinal components. If there's anything to add, I would add raw honey. So it's better to have hot or lukewarm. So when people have iced tea, green iced tea, you lose a lot of the benefits. In addition to the teas you'd find at the grocery store, there are also lots of other teas that are very effective at treating specific medical conditions in lieu of popping a pill. Dr. Fratellone is also a registered herbalist with a vast knowledge of teas made from various plants, trees, and shrubs. His patients often drink those teas instead of taking allergy medicines, antacids, cough suppressants, and more. There are many teas that have antibiotic properties, so you don't have to always have to take an antibiotic. Yarrow has a great antibiotic profile against many bacteria and viruses. I use barberry. Berberine, these are all teas from natural plants. He points out many conventional medicines derive from plants. We have a tea for arthritis. I use uh, white willow bark, which is from the tree salix. It's the active ingredient of aspirin. So I mix white willow bark, a little turmeric, a little ginger, and probably some devil's claw. Dorota Meller needed to overcome her chronic fatigue. So I was really dizzy all the time. Um, I felt weak. I felt tired. I couldn't get out of bed. And then when it was evening time, I couldn't fall asleep. But I was always just lethargic. Dr. Fratellone discovered a problem in her intestinal tract. So not only the iron, but my vitamin D, my vitamin B, I wasn't absorbing anything that I was eating or my supplements or vitamins. I expected to be put on medication or additional supplements. I, I really didn't know. But Dr. Fratellone said it's as simple as a tea mixture. And when he first said it, I was maybe a little bit um, hesitant. I was like, how is this tea going to help me? Within a month, she felt better. And my iron for the first time in probably 10 years is normal. So and so is my vitamin D. So I know that whatever he gave me, it worked. And it's as simple and as easy as a tea. I believe as an MD and an herbalist that the gut is the gateway of all disease. So I want to heal the gut first. So you might take gluten, dairy, and let's say corn out of your diet. Unless you heal your gut, you're still going to have the symptoms. So the gut healing tea contains slippery elm, marshmallow, meadow sweet, and raspberry. 
He says cleavers, mullein, blue, violet, and ladies' mantle are good for breast health and PMS. These are all teas for uh, keeping the female side active, and we make that as a tea. I give that to some of the patients when they're going into menopause to ease in with a nice natural tea instead of taking a lot of things that are harmful. It's important to know these teas can interact with conventional medicine, so check with your doctor or registered herbalist before drinking them. The growth of these treatments has led to a relatively new healthcare provider known as a naturopathic physician. They attend an accredited four-year program focusing on botanical medicine, food as medicine, and other natural remedies. I think there needs to be more marketing to realize this medicine is available and that you don't have to jump on a statin or a blood pressure medication when you might be able to control it with just some dietary changes and maybe the use of an herb, which is not that much different than a drug, which is why it's important whether it's tea or herbal pills that you do see a naturopath because um, you need to have coordination of care with other medications as well. While naturopathic doctors practice in each state, they're only licensed in 19 with more on the way. So for overall better health, begin or increase your daily dose of green tea. Research overwhelmingly concludes it's worth the effort. Lori Johnson, CBN News. Wow, I think I've been doing it for all these years. Exactly. You know, I got a call last night from my doctor. I have a doctor. And uh, he took a blood sample, as they do every so often, to see how you're doing. And he said, you know, a couple of years ago, I told you that you had a little bit of a high cholesterol, mm -hmm. and I told you to take Crestor. Well, there wasn't any way in the heaven I'm taking a statin. I mean, I'm just not going right. to do it. So uh, uh, he said, what did you do? He said, you don't have any high blood pressure anymore. I said, well, I, I'm in for, to nuts and berries. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't tell him about all the tea I drink. Yeah. I mainline this stuff. Well, you've stuff. been drinking tea for a long time. Well, I, I, I used to drink coffee. I drink six, seven cups of coffee a day. And when I, find, I stopped to fast one day, and I had such a hideous headache, I asked the Lord to take it mm. away. And, and subsequent to that time, I haven't drunk any coffee. And coffee will um, is addictive, and it does give a headache. And yeah. you know, but tea yeah. doesn't. You can stop drinking tea; it doesn't hurt. Well, and it seems like there are a lot of natural ways with tea to oh, really yeah. address well, the many, green many tea different and physical the other needs. Tea. But you know, the thing about it is, chai is Chinese for tea. So somebody said, I've come, I'm going to drink chai today. Well, good for you. You're drinking tea. It's just a different name and a different language. Mm -hmm. but, uh, mm -hmm. but there are all kinds of teas. But, you know, my son Gordon, he brings this stuff from India, and I have this delicious, they have these wonderful things that uh, they get the little leaves of teas mm -hmm. off the mountain top someplace in India, and they pack them up and send them in. And uh, it's really delicious. Yeah, sometimes even the little flower is still in there. Uh, yeah, exactly. You know, well, I, I used to do the um, the green tea with the jasmine. It was, mm. That's what I. I when, remember that. Yeah, when There's I was a in China, I, 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 I did green tea and jasmine. Anyhow, here's looking at you. All right. <laughs> Terry. Well, coming up, they're sisters, singers, and they've got a simple way for you to keep slim this holiday season. The trim, healthy mamas share their expertise, and that's coming up next. Still ahead. It wasn't a little boy we saw that morning. A boy who fell down a well and a call for prayer heard round the world. I haven't experienced anything like that in my life. Watch a miracle unfold. That was even better. Later on today's 700 Club. Well, this time of year is great for sharing a meal with family and friends. It's not so great if you're trying to watch your waistline. So two former singers have a suggestion. Have a trim, healthy holiday. Former Christian recording artist Pearl Barrett and Serene Allison are sisters, and together they created the Trim Healthy Mama movement. Both of them have large families and love to make trim and healthy meals for their loved ones. In their cookbook, Trim Healthy Mama, Pearl and Serene serve up delicious and trimming recipes for your holiday feast. The Trim Healthy Mamas, Pearl Barrett and Serene Allison are here with us again. We welcome you back to the 700 Club, and especially this time of year because everybody's in the kitchen a great deal over the holidays, and we like to do things that are tasty, pretty, and we can do them 
with health, right? Slimming. You can actually eat all the goodies and find your slim. We can have our cake. We can eat, eat it, it too. too. I like that. Even for breakfast. I like yes. that. You know, one of the things I love at the holiday is to have a just a little pot on the stove of wassail that's staying mm. warm with cinnamon sticks and cloves and all those wonderful smells of the holiday. But you've got cranberry. Do you yes. say you say we say wassail? Wassail. Um, okay. But we oh, might the song. Here yeah. we go, a wassailing. So. So, yeah. well, with sale and wassail. Yeah, well, we just say <laughs> whatever. It's whatever, it's good. And it fills your house with that aroma. And our version has no sugar. And, and it, it's a health tonic to your body, full of vitamin C. Which so is wonderful. Colds and flus. It has know. no sugar, because normal wassail just has... Like cups, yes, yeah, yeah at yes. least a cup, mm -hmm. and it has no juice. It's not cranberry juice, yes. so which is hard on your blood sugar. We've You've put boiled the cranberries. Yes, yes. we kind of simmer the cranberry so that it's kind of brewed a cranberryish flavor without all that sugar. And then your favorite addition, yes. stevia, yes. Which one that doesn't, it. one that doesn't taste kerosene like. No. Okay, well, and you can find out which one that is in the book. <laughs> right? That's one yes, way to get you so to go look. Nice. It's kind, kind to your blood sugar, and that's what we mm. need. We need it all year, but especially. <laughs> Yeah, even at this holiday and season. And when we stay hydrated in the holiday season, then I don't feel like we get the naughty, peckish snacking monster. Mm -hmm. As much. Yes. Because yeah. I think it's just sometimes we just need a pick me up, a pick me up. But maybe we and just we need grab to be the wrong thing. We just need yeah. to be hydrated mm -hmm. a bit more. Yeah. And then you've got sausage balls. Now I would not have thought this was on the health list, oh. girls. I mean, oh. yeah, I know, but oh. that's what we do. We turn things oh. on their end because so it's what like. what is that? Do you want some it's, it's it's actual protein, As, actual sausage. You can use beef mm. sausage. You can use turkey venison. Anything you want, but because it's protein, it releases that hormone glucogen in your body, which releases fat. That's so fat very, stripping. Very mm. often, we'll hear people talk about the fact that they take the meat out of their diet to try to lose weight. But really, we mm. need heavy protein, don't we? We do, and meat is in the Bible. It's a mm. biblical food, so we eat it. It's Why a not? Gift. It was good yeah, enough for Jesus, is. you know, it's it good is. enough yeah, for us. For me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's move down here and take a look. You've got something really yummy here called oh. a chocolate truffle cake, a mint chocolate truffle yes, cake. Yes, mint at, at Christmas, perfect. But you know what? We like to eat chocolate cake for breakfast. Uh, it's a great start to your day for, and for lunch. lunch. Yeah, no, and for, for dinner. Real. Yeah, and for dessert. Okay, I knew I liked them. Okay. No, because it's full of protein. I mean, this not only does it taste good, it's good for you. So why why do you have a rule about not eating cake for breakfast? We break all the rules. Oh, this has everything. This has protein in it. Has fiber in it. It has secret veggies in it. You, I mean, <laughs> unbelievable. This is like your good. Yes. You don't. You do not tell your children. children. You didn't hear it. Yeah. Oh. Right. But yeah. This is just everything good for you is in a slice. Well, and then move down to this. Deli these oh. are truffles. Don't get her started. No, 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 no. I have about I have about four of these before my feet can hit the floor every morning because I'm a oh. nursing mum. So you know. <laughs> oh, what an excuse! The <clears throat> flavour. Oh my goodness. The texture. It feels so decadent and naughty. So one can have decadence and absolutely be it's, at the it's, same time. It's rich in middle chain fatty acids in MCT oil. And that is just incredibly thermogenically boosting to and your body. And if you didn't understand that, like I don't, <laughs> can I tell you the explanation of it all is in the cookbook that I'll tell you about you know, in just a minute. You know moment. what it really means in plain English, Serene? It means you lose weight. It means revving your metabolism. Yes, yes. you are so right. Let's look down at the end because this is mm. so pretty mm. and so festive here. looking. Mm. And that mm. is, let me look at the, t a chocolate berry wedding cheesecake. Yeah, they get married and live happily ever after, yes. you see. And there's about two slices on there. So. Mm. And chocolate <laughs> and berries. <laughs> go together. So they get yeah. married and, and, and they look mm -hmm. beautiful yeah. together. Oh, and this That's... is our skinny chocolate. Mm -hmm. This isn't just some, you know, bad for your chocolate. This is the skinny chocolate that has the MCT oil in it that revs so your you metabolism. So you enjoy it oh, and yeah. have all the good, mm -hmm. the good stuff going on yeah, in your body as well. Yeah, that's what we're about, eating the good stuff. Let's tell people how you made this. Okay. I'm going to tip this up so you can put ingredients in. So this easy. is a... A nut-based crust. Okay. okay. Natural food, nuts, butter, and a little bit about, you know, stevia, sweetener. It's so mm -hmm. simple. So you've pressed that down yeah. into a spring pan, right? And then sort of just like a normal cheesecake. You yeah. put in your cream cheese. We've got three blocks here. We actually use normal ingredients. <laughs> For years, we used <laughs> yeah, like, weird ingredients. Yeah. And it was just basically like it was never real dairy. It was tofu yeah, and it was, something. Yeah, yeah. we've always had tofu Am cheesecake. I going to get it in here? I think you are. But Serene, you're supposed to be like the good helper and you're just oh, talking. Oh, oh, okay. No, I'll tell you what, I'm just so excited about this okay. because it's real. It tastes real. Okay, now we're, are we just... 
three eggs. See, this looks Put rich. In. It looks rich in calories, yes. but oh, because we're not, in here. yes, Don't and that's our stevia sweetener. And and it, once you learn to use stevia, you never go back because it's natural. This is the stevia sweetener. It doesn't raise your blood this sugar. That's the magic you because want to that? because yeah. we didn't, you know, throw in a bunch of sugar. This here is going to be trimming to our waistline. This is a little lemon, lemon and lemon, lemon zest. zest. That and vanilla, oh, of vanilla. course. Lemon. Vanilla. Yeah, you know what? We were, we were created to crave fat. Yes. We shouldn't deny ourselves the taste of fat. Turn her on. Yes. That's it. Know. Just whiz it up real quick and... Yeah. Are we allowed to Hi. finger dip Hi. after we turn this thing off? You, you're going to finger dip. That's good. You can, you're looking for it to smooth out, yeah, right? Yeah, you want it yeah, to smooth out, but we're just going to show the whole idea here. Push yeah. this back. Yeah. And, and um, this is the whole idea. Yes, La -da. it is. But oh. we have one in the... Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, are you going to put this on top, We're going to do that in a minute if I knew right? really what I was doing here. Be here we go. <laughs> we'll sort ourselves out. Okay. Hey, your beat is a little different <laughs> from my beat. <Yeah. laughs> This but, is and superb. You pour on. This is superb. Oh, okay. Here she comes with the real thing. But you oh, pull wow. it out. Superb. 350 in the oven. Wow. And then you're going to top it with our wonderful skinny chocolate berries. And everybody is going to think that you are a wonder chef. And, and they're like going that. to think that this is that they were very oh, naughty when they me. ate it. <laughs> and then you'll be able to tell them, oh, that's no, you're yeah, a good you'll girl. You'll be like, oh no, I lost 30 pounds eating this way, you know. Top it with berries mm. and you've got, that is delicious. Mm. You've just seen a handful of recipes Yum. that are available in the Trim Healthy Mama Cookbook. It's available nationwide. Don't forget you can learn more about the THM lifestyle in the book, The Trim Healthy Mama Plan. It's all in there. Two books that have been on the bestseller list. You want to add them to your cookbook and to your lifestyle library. So Pearl, Serene, thank you so much for being with us. Get the cookbook. You'll be glad you did. And we'll be back in a moment. Stay with us. A parent's nightmare. We're just praying that this is a dream. Watching their son slip away. Then it kind of started hitting me. This family's complete recovery. And you're just like, this is amazing. Next on The 700 Club. Welcome back to the 700 Club. Liberty University's president is proposing that students at the school be allowed to bring concealed weapons into dormitories. The announcement Wednesday by President Jerry Falwell Jr. comes days after he encouraged students to get permits to carry concealed guns in response to the mass shooting in San Bernardino, California. Falwell was making changes to the dorm policy at the student's request. That's because of a lot of requests I've received from, from you, from students, about um, not, it not being a good idea of having gun-free zones in the residence hall. So we're making that change at your request. The school's governing board must approve that change. Three couples in North Carolina have filed a lawsuit to overturn the state law that allows officials to refuse to perform same-sex marriages because of their religious beliefs. The plaintiffs include two same-sex couples. State Senate Leader Phil Berger says everyone seeking a marriage license in North Carolina has received one since the law was enacted in June. He said, quote, this is just the latest attempt by the far less political correctness mob to force their beliefs on everyone else by trampling the First Amendment guarantee of religious freedom. You can always get the latest from CBN News by going to our website at CBNNews.com. Pat and Terry will be back with more of the 700 Club right after this. It only takes a moment, just a blink of an eye, for your entire world to change. And that's what happened to the Jackson family after their son Eric vanished out of sight and was later found lying face down in an open well. It's it, everything you've ever thought of at your worst moment in your life. You're just praying that this is a dream. This isn't happening. On May 21st, 2008, Bruce and Kelly Jackson's 22-month-old son, Eric, wandered away from the playground at a local Mother's Day Out program. 
Before caregivers noticed he was missing, Eric fell headfirst into a six and a half foot abandoned well. But then I said, well, there wasn't water in it, was there? And they said, could you just meet us at the ER? At this point, you know, I realized <laughs> somebody said there was water in it. We arrived on the scene. We were presented the child by the staff there. I do not know how long without oxygen, but from our indicators, from what we look for, um, he was cyanotic, he was blue. He, it, there was nothing on the, uh, the monitor, no showing no heart activity, was not breathing on his own. And all practical purposes, he was dead. First responders immediately started CPR and Eric was rushed to the nearest hospital. But they said they needed me to go back and see him, that if I wanted to see him, it probably needed to be right now. And I thought, what do you mean? Then it kind of started hitting me. And then I was like, no, I'm not going back without Bruce. We went over and um, um, held his hand. And um, he didn't seem recognizable. He wasn't, he wasn't a little boy we saw that morning. And um, <clears throat> they were still doing everything they could. But after 90 minutes of CPR and without any additional medical intervention, Eric's condition changed suddenly. And they came running outside and said his heart is beating again. Miraculous is a word, unbelievable. Uh, in my 25 years, never seen before, unexplainable. Still in critical condition, Eric was life flighted to Vanderbilt Children's Hospital. They told us that his uh, kidneys had shut down, um, that his lungs were damaged, that his liver was shutting down, um, his uh, internal organs were failing. Um, they didn't know the extent of the brain, brain damage. And they said, if he makes it through the night, we'll talk tomorrow. My prayers were. I wasn't sure if he was going to be okay, but I knew that um, I just needed God's strength, whether he made it or he didn't, but I kind of really didn't think he was. As news of Eric's accident spread, people all over the world were praying for him. Our church during that time period was just amazing, overwhelming. I just, I couldn't believe it. At this point, uh, there were it had to have been thousands of people praying for us. You just felt the love and the concern, and I, I haven't experienced anything like that in my life. Eric was on life support and in a coma. After one week, due to his lack of progress, doctors scheduled a meeting with Bruce and Kelly. He was on, you know, breathing machines and, and all the necessary equipment to keep him alive. They were gathering all the specialists, and uh, we were supposed to meet that afternoon but the Jacksons never had that conference with the doctors. Before the meeting, that's when um, one of the nurses ran in and said that he was awake. <laughs> um, as, it, as exciting as it was when he was born, that was even better. It was just an amazing experience. And when, I, when you talk to a medical professional, that that's what they do and they see and they see so many other things and they're just like, this is amazing. This is miraculous. In the months to follow, Eric had to undergo extensive physical therapy to learn how to walk, talk and eat again. So you could see the delays in certain areas, but that gap just kept getting narrow, more and more narrow. Today, Eric has no residual effects from the accident and is a bright and healthy eight year old. He's just funny. I think he's just smart and sweet, and I think he's a good friend, and I think he's, uh, you know, I'm his mom, so I think he's just great. <laughs> if you saw him, you would never know that anything had happened. Every day, he's just, uh, he, he does uh, the things that you would expect a normal boy to do. The Jacksons say they pray Eric's experience will bring hope to hurting families. My relationship with Christ is just kind of put the exclamation point on it. He didn't fail me. Couldn't have made it without him. I think just trusting and believing that he, he's got a plan. Well, on your faith, he's good, and uh, he's going to be there with you. What a, what a miracle! What a wonderful uh, testimony! What a sweet little boy! Just imagine that young couple and that beautiful little kid, and just in a flash, he's gone. Yeah. But God brought him back. Now we've uh, given out some things. 
uh, which you can hang on your tree, but also you can pop out some prayer requests and send them into us. And so we have them. And you want to share? Well, for CBN Partners, this is what the flyer is going to look like that you get in the mail. Yeah. When it comes, what Pat's talking about is inside. It'll look like two cards like this. This is your keepsake or ornament that pops out of here. And then the green one is to fill in your prayer requests and send them back to us. They're hanging on trees all over our campus. And every day we pray for your prayer needs. And here are some, Pat, that have been sent in. This is someone saying, I need the Lord's help to pay off student loans. I need healing of Parkinson's and rheumatoid arthritis. I need deliverance from drugs and alcohol. And someone else saying, I need a miraculous healing of my heart, kidneys, liver, and lungs. You know, these people are... Our friends and partners are asking these prayer requests. They're, they're not just strangers. These are folks that are kind of like part of the family. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, we want to make sure we, that we understand how they're suffering. Somebody said, I need deliverance from anxiety. And somebody else wants healing from an inoperable brain tumor. And somebody needs a full-time job for a son. And somebody says, forgiveness and restoration in my family. So apparently they're... They hate each other. Now look, Terry and I are going to pray, mm -hmm. and we're going to believe God. You've just seen the story of a little boy who God touched because people were praying all over the world for him. God hears and answers prayer. So we join together right now. Father, I join with my dear sister in Christ, and we believe God. We hear these heart-rending requests People are suffering inoperable brain tumor, cancer. Somebody with a family that's torn apart with hatred. Other prayer requests that they've asked for all over this nation and around the world. Father, thank God that you are the God we serve and nothing's impossible with you. So Lord, we magnify your name. We lift before you your children and we say, God, please, today in Jesus' name, do a miracle. And we speak faith in your name. And Terry, God's given you mm -hmm. something. Someone, you've been diagnosed with cancer of the stomach, and it's been so, not just in life interrupting, but painful. God is healing you completely today. But many of you are saying, that's not my cancer. It's all cancer today. Lift your hand up right now. Receive what God has to give you with joy. You're being healed in Jesus' name. Uh, there's a woman, I believe the name is Marcy, but, uh, but anyway, it's, it's a, you had a lump in your left breast mm. and uh, God right now is, it's like a fire burning and that, that lump is leaving and you're going to be completely whole, no cancer. And may the joy of the Lord come into every home right now in Jesus' holy name. Mm. Amen. Amen. And amen. So if you need further prayer, please call in. We've got folks on the phone right now. Uh, they, they're there to pray for you. They love to pray for you. They see miracles. They believe God. They'll come to God on your behalf. So the number's there, 1-800-759-0700. Here's Terry. Yeah, I believe somebody's also been healed of spinal stenosis. So just mm. take that for yourself today. Amen. Well, coming up, it's email time. David wants to know, experts say that Trump's plan to ban Muslims from immigrating to America is unconstitutional. But isn't the Constitution for our people in our land? How can it apply to people from other countries? Another round of Bring It On is next, so don't go away. In the mountains of Kyrgyzstan, people live at a level of poverty that you and I can only imagine. One shepherd there had to feed his family of eight on just $80 a month. Mountains cover more than three-fourths of the country of Kyrgyzstan. These mountains are where Erkin spends his days as a shepherd. Erkin lives well below the poverty line. His salary is the equivalent of $80 a month. I feel much pain because of the fact that I earn so little and I cannot provide my family with all they need. Our father works a lot but doesn't get much money, so we don't have enough of food. We often eat only noodles or bread. Nurzada, Erkan's wife, does her best to take care of her husband and six children. I feel so bad when I see somebody insulting my children for wearing old clothes. Is it their fault? 
Nurzada and Erkin have one dream, to provide a better life for their children. I would like to breed hands. I would be able to sell eggs and breed chicken. When Orphan's Promise heard about Erkin and his family, help was quickly on the way. We gave them three goats for milking and 30 laying hens. It is an amazing day today. You brought us goats and chickens. The children immediately decided who would take care of the chickens and who would take care of the goats. All of them are happy. You can't imagine what happiness and joy it is for us. Now Erkin can provide well for his family, and Nurzada can sell milk and eggs to her neighbors. My parents will be able to buy good clothes for me now, and nobody will make fun of me anymore. Thank you for everything you've done for us, and I wish you the very best. I'm so excited that I cannot find words, but my heart expresses gratitude to you. Thank you. I want to say thank you to you. All of that happened because many of you have joined the 700 Club and it makes us possible to reach out and touch people right at their point of need with the love of Jesus and in very practical ways so that their families can flourish. They can become self-sustaining. It's a gift of hope and you can't put a price tag on that. But let me tell you about a general membership for 700 Club. It's 65 cents a day, $20 a month. We want to invite you to join with us right now. Our toll-free number's there on your screen. It's 1-800-759-0700. All you have to do is call and say you want to join Join the 700 Club. You'll be joining with thousands of people who are out to change the world with their kindness, their compassion, and their generosity. So please call now. When you do our way of saying thank you for caring about others is to send you a new day. This is a packet put together just for you. We want you to have it. And uh, here's, oh, actually, this is not, this is not what we're going to send you. We're going to send you a packet called the Transforming Word. And it's filled with teaching from Pat on verses to overcome fear and anxiety. And this is what someone said from Melbourne, Florida. Uh, uh. Uh, this is Carmel who said, I am a widow and one who lives alone. The transforming word, verses to overcome fear, encourages me. I speak the verses along with Pat, write down the scriptures to read when I'm not at home, and I am so much at peace. That's awesome, Pat, yeah, because that's, that's exactly great. what we wanted. Lots of uh, anxiety and fear in the world today. You don't need to live under that. You're a child of the king, so let us send you the transforming word. Want to bring it on? Let's bring it on. Okay. Do it. Do this it. is an interesting right. first question for you from David, who says... Presidential candidate Trump said recently that he was for banning Muslims from entering America until we can figure out what's going on and what to do about identifying the radicalized people. The experts immediately said that religious rights are protected by our Constitution. You can't do that. My question is, isn't our Constitution in place for our people in our land? How does our Constitution give people from other countries any rights or privileges? Well, it doesn't. And this is, people have been saying things that just are not true in law. Uh, you say it's unconstitutional. No, it's not. Yep. Uh, it's not. Uh, you know, you can ban anybody you want to well, from coming. Well, we did it before, didn't we? I well, mean, in the we, Second well, World War, look you what happened to the Japanese that were interred, and of course, you weren't going to let Nazis come across the border and blow your factories up. Uh, countries can set up barriers they want to, and then foreigners don't uh, outside this country are not supposed to have the benefits of our Constitution, our Bill of Rights. It's for citizens. So uh, I think if somebody says otherwise, I disagree with them. All right. This is a viewer, Pat, who says in 1 Corinthians 7, 2, it says, let every man have his own wife and every woman have her own husband. I've been with my one partner for more than five years. Isn't this common law marriage or am I still fornicating in the eyes of God? <laughs> Look, I don't know what you're doing, but I do know that if you have committed to this one woman and you have committed for life and you have said you are my wife and I am your husband and we will live together in marital harmony for the rest of our lives until death us do part, then in the eyes of God, you're married. Now in the eyes of the law, you've got to get a certificate and you've got a marriage license and go through all those procedures. But uh, in a sense, why not? Why, yeah. why would you not do it? It's a simple thing. You go down to the uh, Justice of the Peace or the Clerk of the Court and get yourself a license, and it's done. So, um, but uh, are you fornicating? You are if it's just a one-night stand and you're out looking for others, but uh, it doesn't sound that that's the case. 
Lauren. Okay, this is Terry who says, Hello, Pat. I've been with my husband for 32 years, married for 20 years, and living with him for 12 years before we got married. I love this man with every breath that I breathe, but recently he left me for another woman. We plan to grow old together. I keep praying for him and I want my marriage back. Is it okay to pray for restoration? He's not saved. I do pray for his salvation also. Please help. I'm so hurt, but I love my husband. Uh, that's a statement of love after all those years. It should touch every heart. Uh, God also understands your heart. And you are married and you want this husband and you love him. And uh, you say, is it right to pray? Well, of course it's right to pray. Look, God is a God of restoration. He's on the side of restoring things. He's not on the side of destroying things. He's on the side of just restoring. And you want a marriage restored. And what you really want more than anything else is that your husband will come to the Lord. And uh, I would just recommend that you keep an open heart and the loving heart you've got. And uh, if your husband refuses the wooing of the Spirit of God, then, in a sense, let him go. But right now, is it wrong to pray for him? Of course not. All right. Okay, this is Allie who says, what do you think 2016 is going to bring for America? Are we in the end times? Is 2016 going to be a year of difference in America with all the terrorists and wars? Um, I, I don't know what to say about that because I, I haven't really, I, I go at the end of the, wor uh, end of the world, the end of the uh, year to pray and, mm -hmm. and see if I can get some direction from the Lord, but right now I haven't done that. Um, I, I think the big problem facing America is an overwhelming debt, and I think we're going to have a financial collapse somewhere down the road that will be very, very painful. Um, we also have, uh, you know, the North Koreans just said they had a thermonuclear uh, bomb. They've got a hydrogen bomb. That bunch of crazies up in North Korea. Um, you've got uh, threats from ISIS. You've got threats from Russia. You've got uh, uh, radical Islam on every front. and. and it's not going to be any better. The, the guy that takes over as president of this country is going to have a serious problem. But uh, his predecessor isn't leaving with, with what we'd like to see as stability. All right. Well, that's all the time we have for our, your questions today. But we all always right. love hearing from you. So thank you for well, sending them in. Thank you. Well, we appreciate you being with us. And we leave you now with today's Power Minute, taken from <laughs> Isaiah. Give thanks to the God of heaven. His love endures forever.